When buying SD memory cards, how can you tell if you're actually getting what's printed on the card? Welcome to The Three Techs. I'm your host, Tony Tang, and today I'm going to show you how to tell whether or not your memory card lives up to what's actually printed on the outside of it. I was recently shopping online and I found some incredible deals for these one terabyte SD memory cards. Now, normally these would run for $284 in this case for this SanDisk one terabyte card, but I came across a couple of cards that were only $40 for the same one terabyte capacity and actually for a faster speed. I ran across this M-King 1TB card that advertised a transfer rate of 250 megabytes per second. It is an SDXC card with UHS-2 and V60 video speed rating. And on this second card that I purchased, it's also an SDXC card with UHS-2 speed and V60 video speed rating. Now, all of these different numbers and class ratings printed on the card mean something. If you go to the SD Card Association website, we're talking about minimum sequential write speeds, which is really important for video because it's constantly writing video data to the memory card. And if the memory card slows down, that video recording is going to stop because it can't keep up with all the data that's coming in, especially when you talk about 4K and 8K video recording with higher and higher data rates. So with V60, again, we're talking about a minimum of 60 megabytes per second write speed. It should never fall below that. And we're going to test those out on these two cards today. The other thing I want to talk about is the bus speed. Understanding the difference between UHS-1 and UHS-2, and this is one of the easiest things to tell actually, because there is a physical difference between UHS-1 and UHS-2. So first of all, UHS-1 provides faster bus speed using just one row of pins. I have a few memory cards laid out on the table here, and you'll notice that there are differences among all of them. The difference with UHS-2 cards is that they leverage a second row of pins. So they have two rows of pins. So if you'll notice, the memory cards on the top here only have one row of pins, whereas this memory card has two rows, and this micro SD card also has two rows. That would mean that the top two are UHS-1, and the bottom two here are UHS-2. So that's a really easy thing to tell when you're buying a memory card. Just flip it over, look at the back. If it has two rows of pins, it's UHS-2. If it's only one row, it's UHS-1. UHS-2 is faster, as you can see from this table here. 300 megabytes per second approximately compared to 100 megabytes per second for UHS-1. So the thing I want to point out with these cards is that the top two only have one row of pins, and that means they're UHS-1. But if I flip them over, you'll notice that they are the two cards that we just looked at on that web page, which were advertised as UHS-2. So that is a bit of a giveaway that these are not UHS-2 cards. In fact, if you look on it, you do see the Roman numeral 2 there, which means that it should be UHS-2, but when you flip it over, you only see that one row of pins there, which means that it is not UHS-2. The same thing goes for this card, where you can see that there is a Roman numeral 2 there, but again, when you flip it over, it's only one row of pins, not two. Now, if I were to flip this one over, this is a UHS-2 card adapter. But the card inside actually is not UHS-2. If I flip it over here, this is a SanDisk Ultra, and it is only a UHS-1 card. You'll see a small Roman numeral 1 there listed in very small print. And you'll notice when I flip this micro SD card over, it only has one row of pins, where if I grab this other one down here and we compare that, notice how this one has two rows of pins, which means it's UHS-2. 
And if we flip it over and take a look at what's printed on the front, we do see in very small print uh, a Roman numeral 2. So that means that this is UHS-2. I'm going to put that into the UHS-2 card adapter. And we can do some tests on these various cards to see if they live up to the advertised speeds. Now, because the ratings on the cards themselves are V60, which is a video sequential write speed rating, I'm going to use the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test app to test out the sequential writing speed on these cards. Once it appears, I'm going to select it within Blackmagic Disk Speed Test, open it, and click Start. And now we'll be able to see the write speed performance, and you can see that it topped out at 18 megabytes per second, and right now it's settling in around 11.7, and the read speed is only around, looks like, seven megabytes per second there. I will continue to run this again, actually, just so you can see. I'll run it a second time. You can see that the write speed did jump up there to about 40 megabytes per second, but is now dropping back down to about 28 megabytes per second. And then as we do the read tests, we topped out at about 15 megabytes per second there, and now we're dropping down to about five or four megabytes per second. Normally the read speeds are faster than the write speeds on these memory cards because it's just faster to read than it is to write and program data into the memory card. But that's not the case here. Now, we should be seeing at least 60 megabytes per second on this card because remember, it's rated as a V60 card. That means that it should support a minimum sequential write speed of 60 megabytes per second. And you can see that we're not getting 60. We're only getting about 30, not even 30 megabytes per second. So technically, this would not even qualify as a V30 card because it's below 30 megabytes per second. And as far as the read speeds here, it's pretty slow. So we're just gonna stop that for now. The other thing that you want to test when testing out your memory cards is whether or not it is reliable and if it stores the true capacity of what's advertised on the card. So one way of doing that is to copy a lot of data to it. And I've copied several video files over to it. And I can tell you that the video files that I copied over were not playing back correctly after being copied over. The first few were fine, but then as I copied more and more, this is about close to 60 gigabytes worth of video files here. I started seeing errors and glitches when playing back the video files, which means that the data became corrupted or maybe it's not even there. I would conclude that this card is either defective or just poorly designed or doesn't actually store one terabyte of data, at least not reliably in a way that I could read it back. So just be really careful with memory cards out there, especially if it's at a price that seems too good to be true. I've heard stories of people copying all their photos over to a new memory card that they got for a really great price, and then they deleted the original copy, but then when they went to the memory card, they realized that, oh my goodness, I can't recover my photos because it's been corrupted or it's not actually there anymore. So just be sure to test out your memory cards before relying on them for critical data backup. All right, well, maybe this is just a defective card. So let's go ahead, eject this card, and try the other $40 one terabyte SD card and see how it performs. Now this other card was also advertised as V60, which means that the write speed here should be a minimum of 60 megabytes per second. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and start the test. And as you can see right away, the write speed is only about 19 megabytes per second. It kind of froze there, and now it's dropped to 7.7 .7 megabytes per second. It's definitely a lot slower than that other card we were testing. Although the read speeds are faster, they aren't that fast. 15 megabytes per second is not what I would expect from this class of card. If it can write at least 60 megabytes per second, I would expect at least a 60 megabyte per second read speed. So this card, I would say, probably doesn't even qualify as a class 10 card. 
if it's not hitting 10 megabytes per second here. Now we're, we're seeing that it, well, it's dropping into the teens here for the write speed, but it's definitely not even hitting a V30 or 30 megabyte per second write speed. So let's go ahead and stop that test. You should also test the reliability of the card. So this card definitely doesn't live up to the V60 rating or even the UHS-2 bus speeds that I would expect to see. Let's eject this card. And now let's try this Lexar card that is advertised as UHS-2 and V60 speed. So let's go ahead and select this card as the target drive for this Blackmagic speed test and click start and see what happens. Right away, you can see that write speed has jumped up to 120 megabytes per second. That's definitely way above the minimum sequential write speed of 60 megabytes per second. And look at the read speeds. We're up at about 147 megabytes per second. This card is definitely meeting that V60 minimum write speed, and the read speeds are definitely pretty fast, much faster, 10 times faster than those other two cards that we tested earlier. So let's go ahead and stop that test. And just for comparison's sake, let's now put in that other SanDisk card, which is only rated as a UHS-1 bus speed, but it is classified as class 10 and U1. A class 10 rating means that it should support a minimum write speed of 10 megabytes per second. Now, what does that U1 speed mean? Well, as we can see here in this table, U1 is in the same row as class 10, also in the same class as V10, and it means a minimum of 10 megabytes per second sequential write speed. Let's go ahead and switch over to the test here and select our target drive as that SanDisk card and click start. Now, as we can see right away, the write speeds did jump up to a relatively high speed, around 30 or 40 megabytes per second. It's slowing down now to about 26 megabytes per second. Definitely faster than those other two SD cards that we tested that claim to be v60 but were not this one actually claims a lower speed class 10 but it is actually outperforming those other two cards so the read speed here is 87 megabytes per second here definitely a lot faster than those other one terabyte cards that we tested out earlier so this SanDisk card here is definitely meeting that minimum class 10 speed rating of 10 megabytes per second. It's hitting 26 megabytes per second in that last run. And the read speed is 87.1 megabytes per second. A very good speed for this class of card. To summarize the differences between a UHS-1 and UHS-2 card, it's very easy to tell the difference. All you have to do is flip the card over and look to see if there is one row or two rows of pins on the card. Two rows means UHS-2, one row means UHS-1. I think the other lesson that we learned today is that if you find memory cards that are priced at a fraction of the cost as name brand memory cards, you'll definitely want to do some careful testing of the cards to see that they meet the speed rating and also the capacity and reliability rating. You want to copy some test data over to the memory cards, compare it to the original data, try to open all the files that you copied over to the memory card to make sure that they're all readable and they haven't been corrupted. And also, I hope you learned how to test out the disk speed of these cards using the free Blackmagic Disk Speed Test app. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and like to see more videos like this. We'll talk to you next time on the 3 Techs.